Hello and welcome to Anatomy of Us, a show dedicated to bringing real help to real couples. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. What's up, guys? My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and together we are high-performance marriage coaches. We are cutting through the bullcrap and creating a movement of happy, healthy, badass couples all over the world. Let's go! Hey, guys. How's it hanging? <laughs> now, that was funny. Low, hopefully. <laughs> okay, today we have What's a up, listener question, and it says, my husband doesn't like it when I express my feelings. How can I get over the pain when I can't be comfortable feeling how I feel? My husband mm. doesn't like it when I express my feelings, my hurt, my pain, but he expects me to get over it, and I can't, and so I bottle it all up, which isn't good. What should I do? Okay, instantly, I have two perspectives here. Okay. Sam. So one is your husband is a douche and he uh, needs to no, no nope. Remember, this is two perspectives. Two remember perspectives. the vow you made to the Lord about your behavior and what you would talk like. Douche is not a cuss word. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm gonna get all the emails right now. Okay. Let's forward them to you. So I have two perspectives because I always have additional Spit it in, out. investigative questions when we get questions, right? So yeah. two scenarios here. Either the wife is like, yeah, he doesn't listen, and I have a lot of things, and I have feelings, but he just shuts them down. He is dismissive. He is self-centered and doesn't listen to my feelings. Right. So if that is the case, this is a husband issue. So if the husband is listening, I'd be like, dude, your wife is a lady. Listen to her feelings. Not <laughs> Your wife is a lady. <laughs> your wife is a woman. Not everything is there for you to solve or fix. Men, we've talked about this a hundred times before. Men often go, oh, my wife is telling me a problem. Oh, problem. Okay, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to process. I am instantly going to fix mode because right. guys are, are fixers. We're doers. <clears throat> kind of like that. So if that's the question, no, you don't have to fix it. Hey, Melanie, you got a problem? Is this something that you just want to process and listen or me to listen? Yes or no? Okay, I know which track to take. Mm -hmm. No, I'd, I want you to listen, but I also want your help and your thinking on this and just go do the thing I'm asking you to do. I don't right. want to talk about it. Go fix the thing. Right. Okay. So that gives me information on which track to take. Other hand, lady, sister, how much of this are you holding on to? How much are you trying to process? And are you in your feelings? And I'm saying this from a person, me, that guy, this guy right here with the shoulders. As a person who is in their feelings very often, in their head often, and I am working very diligently to get out of my head, mm -hmm. right? Because guess what? It's a lonely place and you're the only one there and nobody else wants to go there. <laughs> you know what well I'm saying? Well stated. So, so it's, it's true. So yeah. in, in my, my questioning, my other, that second scenario is, okay, is, is, is this woman um just in your head too much or is it like no i've tried my husband just doesn't listen and yeah. it sucks so now what do i do to process that right which i'm gonna let you answer that part because oh, you're a woman you. <laughs> i appreciate that you let me now i can do this because you have let me um go ahead i think that there i want to talk about sort of what you were saying um if you're if you're a person that's like in your head all the time and you like ruminate on your thoughts and your feelings and it's like obsessive like you're stinking thinking well kind of sorry my hair is driving me bonkers um it's like if you're a uh what is it the enneagram like four and they're in their like heart center all the time or they're thinking they just like they kind of fold in on I'm themselves a, I'm a four and, just to remind you yeah you're a f I'm a, that's why I used it um and then like every emotion times 10,000. Mm -hmm. um, if that's something that you're struggling with, I hope that this can be helpful because uh, your husband might actually not feel what you feel or think what you think or care mm. about what you care about. That might feel hurtful to hear, but that is like literally what we are talking about right now, even in our own therapy with our therapists and in our like Enneagram work that we do just talking to one another and mm -hmm. stuff like that. If Seth feels feelings that I actually don't feel. Uh, and it's not that either one of us has a deficit or that either one of us are broken. It's just we are completely wired. We're very different people. Um, I don't care about him being sad about a thing. I care about him, but he's not going to be able to convince me to be sad about something that I'm just not sad about. Be emo with me. 
Oh no. For once. Oh no, thanks. <laughs> um, and so that's really challenging if you don't understand that you're not meant to be this like amorphous, homologous combined unit. You're not supposed to be a fruit smoothie. Dr. Dan Siegel said that in our like episode five of mm -hmm. our, of all the hundreds of episodes we've done, we interviewed Dan like Siegel. The literal episode five. Yes. And it was called the science of love. You That's can go funny. listen to it. And he is my boyfriend. Don't tell Seth, but Dr. Dan Siegel talks about people want to be a fruit smoothie. They want their spouse or their boyfriend or girlfriend to feel and think and want all the same things. That, so you can't tell the chunks apart. There's no mm. strawberry chunks or pineapple chunks. It's all the same. It's all pink. It's blinted. It's blinted. It hath been blint. And in reality, healthy relationships look more like a fruit salad. You can see the potato. No, what's a fruit salad? The pineapple. You can see strawberries. You can see grapes. It's a potato salad. I live in the Pacific Northwest, and you, we don't eat fruit salad that much out here. There ain't no fruit. It's all apples. But uh, so you, why I'm saying that is that to honor your differences, he has differences around emotions than you. Honor that, and then promote ways that you can link. Now, one of my biggest problems with this email is you say. Well, it's a very short email, but let me read the whole thing. My husband doesn't like it when I express my feelings, my hurt, my pain, but expects me to get over it and I can't. And so I bottle it all up, which isn't good. That's a choice. You don't need to bottle it up. That's the choice. It's not your husband's fault. That's a choice. Like, bottle it up. <laughs> bottle it up. I mean, little, little, little bottle it up. <laughs> you don't need to bottle nice, it up. That is nice, not your only option. Nice run there. Same with you. Uh, you're my backup singer. You had like a tambourine like that. Um, I'm on it. Bottling up your feelings is not the only response available um, or option available to you mm -hmm. because of what your husband is like. So I don't want you to believe that lie. You can go to therapy. Mm. You could go to therapy. You could talk it through with a friend. You could go to, I don't know, church counseling. You could join women's group coaching and talk with us in the group about it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I got the domain womensgroupcoaching.com. It's not connected yet, but it will be. You which I'm that? really, I did. Nice. Good job. I bid on it. It cost me $12. <laughs> I was Ooh. really excited. Anyway. So how about this? And, no, I'm not done. Okay. Uh, but I think it's important to realize that, and all of you humans need to hear this. Seth Studley, you also need to hear this. Mm. Just because your spouse does not respond the way you think they will respond does not mean the only option is shut down, withdraw, don't tell anyone, bottle it up. That is not true. Mm -hmm. So do what you need to do to process what you need to process but do not expect that your partner will be your identical twin in feelings. Now, I do think that there's something to be said for the husband. If the husband's like, you know, can it, Janet? I just made that up. Like, That's stop it, lady. We, like, ha we have known couples that one of the couples, one of the people mm -hmm. have done that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm very remembering a very specific one. A lady liked a certain holiday and the husband was a real douche mm -hmm. about it. And he said, I don't care. I know care. exactly who you're talking about. I know. I don't care that you like it. It's stupid and I'm not doing it. Yeah. And you're stupid for liking it. So you like Indiana Jones. You like Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. You like several things. Puppies. Jungle Cruise. Jungle Cruise. All Indiana that stuff. Jones again. And any, any, any of that, if I said, hey, that's <laughs> stupid. I'm not doing anything any of that with you. Right. Hey, let's go see the premiere of the thing of, at the movies and the dial of destiny. Let's have fun. And this, that is stupid. I don't have to like what you like. I'm not going. That is stupid. Right. That would be quite insensitive of yeah. me and wouldn't really get me anything that I want. I'd go with Tim Alvarino and Stephen Plett and we would go to the movie together. <laughs> We well, don't have to get mad at me. I'm going to go with you. I'm mad now. <laughs> and I'm, I'll see you there, Stephen and Tim. <laughs> Tim They're probably my doesn't best listen friends. to our I highly show. doubt it. <laughs> be cool if you did. But anyway, uh, that's that's not good. That's not going to get the husband yeah. anything that he wants, right. right? And it's just insensitive. That is not how to be married. No. You know, it's you. You. I mean, what if what if your boss? And I'm not saying that this is a boss employee relationship. But what if your boss said, "Hey, I need to do this. It's important that we get this done. This goes with the overall mission of our entire company." Well, that's stupid. I don't believe in the mission, and I'm not going to do that. Right. You wouldn't last long there. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't last long. Yeah. So I want to ask what your thoughts are on this, because it, just like full transparency, hope you're okay with us going here. Maybe. I don't know. This does feel like uh, almost identical to how our last like several weeks of sessions have gone, where it's like, 
you're just so angry at me, not, you know, not whatever, but like you're disappointed you. in me that I don't think and feel the way that you think and feel. So to a degree. Uh, What's the degree? Like 1%? No. 1 degree? 30? To, to, a, to a degree that it's definitely somewhere that I need to grow. And also to a degree, I, I think part of you and your personality could be a little more excited about the things I like. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm about not about the things you like. About about some feelings around stuff because oh. often. But okay, so coming at it from a family systems perspective, differentiation. I can be happy even if you. Yeah. If you're not watching the YouTube's right now, <laughs> Melanie was making fun of me behind my back, <laughs> and it was really funny. So differentiation i can be happy even though you're not happy mm -hmm. my my content my peace my whatever is not contingent upon what you do or you don't do right mm -hmm. that is a differentiated person but there's also family of origin stuff that comes along that oftentimes it's almost like polite that you are enthusiastic about what your partner likes right and mm -hmm. that that feels good it's like Hey, we're having a party. You want to go? And then everybody gets excited and it's more fun. Mm -hmm. What? You haven't brushed your teeth, I don't think. I'm drinking coffee. It's a lot. I've been <laughs> drinking coffee all day. That's not the question. Yes. You brushed your teeth? Yes. When? Last night? I'm still drinking coffee here. Yeah. Anyway. I'll be enthusiastic when you start brushing your teeth in the morning. Everyone write in. If you're listening to this, oh pause and say, I cannot believe you do not brush your teeth in the morning. Which is I the do. only time it matters. I do, but I forgot this morning. I'm sorry. Okay, continue. But anyway, just don't face me when you I continue. have no idea what I was saying. You were saying by family of origin, about, it I, should be polite for me to care about what you care about. Yeah, but just going back to the differentiation kind of thing, it, it's fun when other people around you share some sort of enthusiasm around that, right? And it doesn't mean that, oh, I love dirt biking. You have to like it too, or else I don't like it and I'm never going to go again, right? right? we got a really interesting question that I, we're going to do a podcast about this guy hunting too. So it's interesting. Um, but it does feel good. And when it comes to feelings around things, not like, oh, I'm just in my feelings and you have to match those feelings. Set the sad, set this crazy. Melanie's happy. Everybody be happy. Melanie's sad. Mom's quiet. Everybody match that. I'm not saying that. But on a level, it feels, or not even it feels, and maybe the same for this lady too, it is very relational to me. Like part of a relationship that I find meaningful is you listen, you share in my feelings, basically, mm -hmm. right? And I, I think that... Let me let me stop you right there, just so mm -hmm. it's, it's really does pertinent. That make, does that make sense, though? It does, but I want to say, so this lady said, how can I get over pain when you can't feel comfortable feeling how you feel? My husband doesn't like it when I express my feelings, my hurt, my pain, but expects me to get over it, and I can't, and so I bottle it up. So mm -hmm. the reason I brought that up in relationship to that sentence is mm -hmm. that I think what's challenging about that and what could be happening here, I'm not 100% sure, it, but it could be, mm -hmm. that this lady is, okay, uh, when one spouse is constantly uh, navigating the world like a, what's that called? Like a, um, you know, when there's like a magnet and it's, it's like kind of pulls back and then it pulls back and then it pulls back like mm -hmm. uh, almost like a gravitational pull of a planet. Mm -hmm. It's like you're walking through the world thinking about what impacts you. Mm -hmm. You're not actually thinking about if I'm happy or not. You're like, well, I'm happy. You should be happy because I'm happy. Mm. And when, when you're happy, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm worried about with this lady, and it could be, we could be off the mark, mm -hmm. but is that if she isn't, isn't able to like manipulate the emotional landscape all the time that then she's upset mm. and that's not okay. And mm -hmm. that's what you were doing accidentally. You mm -hmm. weren't aware that you were doing it. Also someone that you love deeply and maybe were raised by does the same exact thing. Well, it goes back to family of origin. Right. We, we go to what we know. Right. And so what happens though in that mm -hmm. is even with this person that you love deeply and maybe you were raised by, you stop giving two craps about what they feel. Mm. I don't care about the thing you just bought at the, let's say, 
Costco wholesale market. Definitely not a flea market. <laughs> um, like, I don't care about it because you actually don't care about my feelings. Mm. So why mm-hmm. would I go the extra four steps that it takes me to make sure your feelings are attuned to when mm-hmm. I don't even have feelings in your eyes? Right. My feelings must be a reflection of your feelings. Mm. And so that's where I think there's a, a little bit of fear, and not fear, a little bit of trepidation in answering this question is that the base on that bottom, I just bottle it up. That's the only option. I di- No, no, mm-hmm. number one, no. Um, but if that's the case, if you're actually like, in a way, it's a, it's a narcissistic trait. Mm-hmm. Like everything must be how I want it to be. Everyone should feel how I should feel. Everyone should want what I want. Mm-hmm. You should want to watch TV the amount that I do. And you should want to watch the shows that I do. What's wrong with you if you don't? Mm-hmm. You know, why would, what's wrong with you? Why don't you ever relax? Why don't you? And I'm taking, I'm pulling from our exact, like our actual life. Mm -hmm. I love to work. Seth likes TV more than I do. But he also, I think you grew up with way more TV than we did. Mm -hmm. And so in my brain, I'm like, eh, sure, I could watch MasterChef Junior. It's all the same crap over. I mean, I do like it, but I would way rather like be pinging Reva in Discord about (laughs) like an email sequence or an event, Mm -hmm. you know? And so that's kind of my, my thought in this question again is like, you can express your feelings, but is that all you're doing? Mm-hmm. Are you walking around just like, well, I'm sad. Why aren't you sad? I'm sad. Like, right. So, so the, another thing that kind of, well, not kind of jumps out at me is sometimes couples, us included, at times we want to over process with our spouse. You're, I think it it was it it uh it skewed more towards you wanting to talk a ton like early in our marriage and now it's me going that way a little bit. But e- even our even our therapist was like, "Hey, less words. Mm-hmm. Well, just less words, like talk less, not not don't have good conversations mm-hmm. about meaningful things, mm-hmm. but process." She means like talk about the problem less. Right. Process less with your spouse. Mm-hmm. Sometimes well, that's the power of women's group coaching and the badass husband mastermind. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> dot com, by the way. Badasshusband.com. Badasshusband.com. <laughs> we we talk about things that uh, we could talk to our wives about, but they don't want to hear it. They couldn't. Well, it's not that they don't want to hear it. It's well, not, you need a tribe. You need you, a group. You, you need, you need people healthier. to bounce stuff off and be like, hey, dude, what are you talking about? That is stupid. Don't do that. Your wife would rather you talk to other men about mm-hmm. things like that rather than with her. Yeah. You know, ad nauseum mm-hmm. all night kind of thing. So are you doing that, lady? Uh, if if that's the case, okay, therapy is helpful. Mastermind uh, in group coaching is helpful. And then the other part of that, I tend to bottle it all up, right? Conflict avoided is conflict multiplied. If you don't deal with it, it grows. It grows. It bzz, grows. And that that is no good. So... What is an appropriate and proper release valve for you? Are you just complaining about stuff all the time? Is everything wrong? Is blah, blah, blah. Can I add a thing to that? Or sorry, go ahead. One second. What we focus on expands Mm -hmm. where, where, where focus goes, energy flows, right? Tony Robbins. And I used to use this analogy with my kids all the time with anger management. Say I have His client kids. Sorry, not my bio kids, kids. my client kids when I do boys groups and stuff. I have a, a bottle of Dr. Pepper, right? Shake it up like crazy. Open it. What happens? <laughs> Spews, right? Right. Because all that pressure is in there. Spews. <laughs> Spews. <laughs> However, take that same Dr. Pepper, shake it up a thousand, open it slowly. Mm-hmm. What happens? Nothing. It releases the pressure appropriately, mm-hmm. i.e. group coaching, i.e. counseling, mm-hmm. i.e. talking to other people about it, reading about it, meditating, praying about it. And then you're not holding it all yeah. in. Right, because that tension that we hold in sucks. It feels terrible, and then that also trickles down to how we interact with our our kids, mm-hmm. our work, our mm-hmm. spouse, our own selves. Yeah. So I saw a really cool illustration. It was from like the fifties of a like a a boss yelling at a hus- like a man. Oh right. And then the man came home and yelled at the wife, mm-hmm. and then the wife came home and yelled at the kid, mm-hmm. and then the kid hit the cat. Right. And it was it was said something like emotional transference or something like that. Mm-hmm. It was really interesting, but. One of the things I want to point out in here that really is concerning is it says, um, how can you get over the pain when, when you can't feel comfortable feeling how you feel? So right now you're saying, I can't be comfortable feeling how I feel because my husband doesn't like it. Mm. Now, 
wait a hot second. That's letting go of your power over that. Right. I mean, that's like, I feel very comfortable wearing overalls and a tie dye shirt or an Indiana Jones shirt, which I own. I bought off of eBay on my own for myself. Seth probably doesn't like it. I don't care. And I don't ask him because it's not his body that is wearing. <laughs> if it was your body, <laughs> what does he say? I'd use your body to get it stop. <laughs> if I were you. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, so it's very important for you to hear what I am saying. You shouldn't be uncomfortable how, with how you feel because your husband doesn't like it when you express it. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? I don't know now, a better way to say that. Now, I think the reason is you're not uncomfortable because of the way that your husband makes you feel. I think you're uncomfortable because it is an uncomfortable feeling. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Maybe, but I want to make sure that it's... I just want to, I want to maybe call it to attention. I don't know that I have an answer for it, but mm-hmm. I don't want anyone to be like, okay, so for example, let's say you hate my van, Mm -hmm. right? I have a Chrysler Town & Country stow and go. It's amazing. Vandolph the Gray is his name. Mm -hmm. He's perfect. Let's say you hate Vandolph. And then I'm like, well, I'm just don't, I'm not confident because my husband doesn't like my van. Mm -hmm. You could see how that's not healthy. Right. Right. But So I could cause insecurity in you just by my words or making fun of the van or whatnot. It can definitely change your perspective on it. Like, oh, well. Maybe he is right, or I don't like it as much as I thought, so that I can make you, what I do or say, or don't say, can create a feeling of insecurity Mm -hmm. in you, which... And then the response to that, so mm -hmm. yeah, you have done that. Like you have said, I don't like that van, I never liked it, blah, blah, blah. And every time I reassess it, based on your words, I'm like, "Mm, I still like it. I want to keep it, it's what I want. Mm -hmm. But again, so the, the reaction, the response to someone is making me feel like I lack confidence because they don't like how I show up in the world in whatever way. They don't like my van, my clothes, my whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, Reevaluate that against the truth of yourself, right? That's a hard sentence to say or think about, but like Mm. I'm okay with Seth not liking my van. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't care anymore. I used to care because I was like, did I make the wrong choice? Does he think I'm dumb? Like I had, I made meaning out of it, Mm -hmm. right? But I want to just reassess it. That van is really great. It's run really well. It's perfect for the kids. It's perfect for what I want. So with all of the data points in there, Mm -hmm. I feel good about that. So in this lady's case, it might be, you know, I am a very feeling person. Seth is a very feeling person, Mm -hmm. right? So evaluate, because it would be different if I was saying, God, I just wish you would just shut up with your dumb feelings all the time. Stuff it, right? right? Like that would be different. And I'm not saying that to you, Mm -hmm. but I'm also saying, I don't want to be drawn into it all the time. Right. Can you manage and handle your feelings apart from me to a degree so that we can meet more neutrally? Mm -hmm. And you would have to take the steps to say, I'm more emotive or emotional than Melanie is. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's how I'm made. Now, if it's, if it's a problem, Mm kind of like the, the van problem. So, Mm -hmm. Or oh, not, there's not a van problem. Not, not a problem. The van topic. Yeah. I like my Toyota Tacoma double cab long bed, right? <laughs> you don't like the truck. No. It's small. You call it a pee-pee truck. It is a pee-pee truck. <laughs> my van holds like four times the amount of You don't of that like truck. how it sits, you know, like when you drive it, all this stuff. I don't like to be uh, d- reclining when I drive and not know what's in front of the hood of my car. So that does nothing to my impression and enjoyment and right. love of my truck. Right. Understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, if I was doing something or or you were doing something, mm-hmm. like instead of the van, you said, I want a 2023 Corvette. <laughs> right? Okay, that only sits, seats two people. It rains and snows out here. Does it really only seat two people? Corvettes only seat two people? Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Didn't know and, that. and that's impractical. So don't get on a high horse and say, well, I am secure in wanting a Corvette and they can stuff it. It's a lot of stuffing it. Right. Projecting so, in this So episode. that would be an inappropriate right. use of what we're saying. Mm-hmm. A truck for me and all, you know, it's four wheel drive. So it doesn't matter if it snows, we're covered. We can mm-hmm. get anywhere, do anything. I hunt. I take the kids snowboarding up in the mountains I only care about that stuff. truck if there's an elk in the back of it. Exact. So, or, skis. or a bike rack, all this stuff. We no. go camping. So that benefits the whole family. It's mm-hmm. not just me wanting a, you know, a Corvette right. or whatever. Same thing with your van. It's a stow and go. It fits stuff, blah, blah, blah. Those are appropriate applications of what we're saying. Mm-hmm. 
So where was I going with that? Well, and I want to. You have to. Oh. You, you have to make sure that it makes sense. You know, hey, we live. We live in a, a eight hundred foot square house. Oh, I want to buy a beach house too. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> that 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 didn't make sense. The, thing, the beach house part. I don't know, man. Uh, but I think one of the things I want to comment on in that is that uh, even. In this, it's honor differences, promote linkages. That's Dan Siegel's words, again, from episode five, all the way back years ago, six or something years ago, episode Mm -hmm. five. He talks about honor differences. 495 episodes ago. I don't know if that's correct, but um, he talks about honoring differences. Now, honor is a really unique word because when we hear honor differences, we think, oh, like tolerate them. Mm -mm, Absolutely not. People get medals of honor. Like you honor. Honor is a high... um, a high, it's a distinction. Yeah, it's a distinction. I That's honor, a good point. A, yeah. a medal of honor. Mm-hmm. Oh, the president or whoever, the military, gives you a medal of honor right. because what you did was highly honorable. Right. It's great. It's just, mm-hmm. it helps more people than just you kind right. of thing. Right? And so in that, honoring differences, going back to the car and the truck example or the van and the truck, I said to Seth, I want you to have exactly the truck that you want. Like, mm. I don't have a preference. I mean, I, if, if I were buying a truck for myself, it would be a totally different thing. But I want you to have the truck that you want, right? It's not my decision what truck he gets. That's not my, I'm not the one driving it around. And so to honor his desires, yeah, get exactly what, the one that you want. I think that's great, right? So snap. even in this conversation, do you just say snap? Mm-hmm. Does that mean a thing? Is that a thing that people say now? Children mm-hmm. say? Um, like uh, cap, no cap, all caps. <laughs> Uh, pen cap. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but like in this, there is a way that you and your spouse can figure out how to honor that you are a more feeling person. So your husband, I mean, I would encourage you to have a conversation about this with him and or husband. If you're listening, this conversation is for you. Mm. Do not tell your wife to just stuff it. You emotional, crazy lady. Don't do that. It's not helpful. That's not honoring that she's more emotive or more emotionally connected or whatever honor it, like see it, be like, I get it. I get that you're that way. And then promote linkages, promote ways that you guys can hang out. That isn't just her crying. Okay. And I'll be really serious. Sometimes I think that you have wanted to just connect in any way. And it was like, well, if I just talk to Melanie about my feelings, that's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. And so then I'm, I feel like it's like torture. It Mm -hmm. just feels like, oh my gosh, how much more can I talk about what he thinks and wants and doesn't blah. Like Mm -hmm. it's just so hard. And that's not what I, that's not what either one of us want. Mm -hmm. So let's honor that we're different. Your barometer for feelings is like goes way higher than mine. It's like goes to 7,000 feelings per minute. Mine goes to like eight and I'm cool with that, Mm -hmm. but don't make me rev to 7,000 feelings per minute when I can't Mm. because you will burn me out. Right. Like burn, completely burn me out. And so again, in this mm-hmm. scenario, it's the other way around where the sp- the wife may be burning the husband mm-hmm. out. Huh? Same, same thing. You like to work mm-hmm. all the time, right? Putting that expectation on me to a degree. I never have. I'm saying. I know, but I'm mad. Don't use that example. You don't have to be mad. That's just an Could example. Be, That's an example. <laughs> I like to get up early. I can get up at 430. No sweat, right? But also like to go to bed before... 10. Right. You you can go to bed at 4:30. Mm-hmm. Right? So you're I'm early, you're a lady. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> Just made funny. that up. Um mm-hmm. but yes, I hope that that's helpful and I really do want to encourage you again wrapping back around to this idea that like bottling up your feelings just because your partner doesn't know what to do with them is a terrible option for any human ever. Right? So that's you included, the person listening, maybe the person whose name is like Martha or someone like Todd, if Todd, if you're listening, or um, James, I'm talking to you. Uh, you don't need to just bottle up your feelings. If that's the only thing you can think of, I want you to expand your thoughts and go, I can go talk to a counselor. I could join the Badass Husband Mastermind. I could join women's group coaching, but not you, James. You're not a woman. Um, but like <laughs> you can do more things than just shut off, mm-hmm. right? And also just to, again, to go back to the idea that you don't need to feel uncomfortable with how you are because of the fact that your spouse doesn't feel and think how you feel and think. Mm -hmm. I would just encourage you to invite a conversation of growth, listen to this episode together, and then go join therapy. Mm. Go get a therapist. Go to betterhelp.com forward slash us. Yeah. Do something about it. 
But or, don't just keep the cycle going. I want to say this. Or if you're a Christian, pray about it. Always. Like crazy. Yeah. Pray about it. Pray without ceasing about it, right? Mm-hmm. God has helped me out a lot. God has helped you a lot. God has helped us a lot. So thanks, God. <laughs> if you're listening. No, Sponsored that, by God. No. God.com. Oh, the, don't go to that. Who knows what that is? It's yeah, I don't know. Probably a site. Do not go to it. Sorry. Um, um, yes, but okay. I hope this is helpful. If more information on getting people around you, like minded people, mind you, you are the sum of the five people you hang out with the most. For us, we're going to be hanging out with bad A people, badass people, right? The women's group coaching is women's group badass, coaching too. and also badasshusband.com. Go there. It's, it's, I you can go to you. Anatomy of Us to find uh, the connections to both of those places. And you can look at um, working with us as doing coaching. Absolutely. Um, we can help you through this. But thank you for sending in your questions. Keep sending them in. People send them to hello at anatomyofmarriage.com and we'll get them answered on the show. And we hope you have a flipping amazing day. All right, guys. Peace out. All right. Talk to you later. later. Bye. Thanks for listening to Anatomy of Us. This podcast is produced by my mom, Melanie Studley, and hosted by my dad, Seth Studley. Our show is edited and published by our producer, Reba Hansen, from Creative Media Support. Special thanks to our Patreon members that get an extra episode every week. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye. Bye.